Hey, what's going on, parents? Welcome back to another edition of Teenager Tuesday. Uh, if we haven't met, my name is Will. I'm the lead student pastor here at Hope. And with me today is the one and only Robert Jordan. How you doing, Robert? Doing good, Will. How are you, man? I'm doing great. Uh, so I asked you this before, but people need to know. Mm-hmm. If uh, this is, I'll give you this for an icebreaker. If uh, there was an endless wave of hamsters that were trying to kill you, uh, endless wave oh. <laughs> coming 50 at a time. How many hamsters do you think you could defeat before they defeated you? Oh man, uh, can they can they jump? I don't I don't know. So let's just say I've no. never seen a hamster jump. So I'm going to go with thousands. Thousands. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Like yeah. 4,000? I would say 4 or 5,000. Yeah. Before I got so tired. I man, you can or get Or they nod through my shoes. Yeah. Oh, but you're barefoot. What if you're barefoot? Oh, then it's probably less, but still, I would say one to two thousand. Yeah, man, that's th- this is what it's a lot of hamsters. No, this though. is what we need to talk about <laughs> here on the Parent Podcast. <laughs> and parents, I know this is why you you're tuning in to hear this stuff like this as well. Um, Robert, I, I'm very. I want to kind of get to what we're talking about today. I'm yeah. excited to talk about this because it's something that. It, it kind of a question that more and more is popping up the the uh, in like the later high school years, mm-hmm. um, but it could be one of those things that kind of creeps younger and younger mm-hmm. as well. And it's this idea of deconstruction. Yeah. Um, you know, especially among twenty uh, somethings, it's a big word, big thing. And maybe some of y'all have some older kids uh, that are are in college or or you know out of college by now. And uh, even just having this kind of conversation and, and knowing how do I even manage this? We can't cover everything. Yeah. We can kind of start to cover. What do you do when you're, you're uh, a high schooler, your daughter, your son comes to you and, and or it just comes up and they use that term deconstructing or maybe they talk about their faith in a deconstructing way. How do they how do yeah, they manage what do you, what do, you do? Yeah, what do they do? Yeah. With that? And, I, and I think it's it's kind of a hot topic right now because there, there is quite a bit of a following on TikTok that mm. uh, is talking about deconstruction and what it is. Um, and, but it's not a new thing. It's something yeah. that's existed in the church for a very long time in a lot of different ways um, but I think how we respond to it is is wickedly important yeah um, I think the first thing that we have to do the first thing that we have to remember like so many other discussions is don't freak out that I hopefully we say that too much I feel podcast. like I've been on this podcast now twice yes. and I think that was my first point on yes. both discussions yes. like don't freak out yeah. um, first and foremost deconstruction doesn't necessarily mean deconversion it doesn't right. mean that they are turning away from Jesus but I no. think that's yeah. always our first assumption yeah. is when somebody is looking at their faith examining their faith oh obviously they're running away from it so yeah panic set. Yeah, right. Because it's, you hear that word Mm -hmm. and a parent might hear, they might not hear deconstruction, but destruction of their faith, you know? Yeah. And deconstruction really at its core is about uh, tearing some pieces down to rebuild back. Yeah. Remodeling. Remodeling (laughs) is more of a a better picture of it. Mm. So the first thing I think you should do is not to freak out. The second thing is I think you should always ask them to tell you their story. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think because of our panic, because of uh, maybe even some of our own upbringing, our first reaction is commands like, oh, well, you're still going to go to church. <laughs> well, that kind of cuts off exactly what typically a teenager or a young adult is trying to do in this conversation. Yeah, They really do want you to hear them, hear them out, hear their story. And I think it opens up a dialogue for you to begin discussing and pushing them towards the right thing. So I, true, I, yeah. I think it's always better if we approach it with a, hey, well, tell me how you got here. Tell me yeah. what you're thinking. Tell me why, uh, why you're thinking the way you are or believing the way you are. Yeah. Um, I think that can go well, a and, long way. And that would probably play into understanding too that a lot of times, and y'all know this as parents, but like people are trying, like young uh, people becoming young adults are trying to figure things out. So a lot of times yeah. they're they're even putting that perspective through a lens of curiosity. Yeah. Where it might sound like this is what they have decided mm-hmm. or this is what path they are deciding when really it's, hey, this is what I'm currently kind of thinking and trying to figure out. And yeah, asking that kind of going in with that curiosity um, uh, can like Grant Diamond, a few podcasts ago, he he said, lead with curiosity because that can lead to influence. Yeah, be, and exactly. And I think that leads us to our fourth thing. Like we need to be sincerely open to discussion mm. um, because any teenager, uh, I mean, starting very young, they're moving the boundaries of authority in their mm-hmm. life. 
Um, they're, they're realizing, I'm gonna be 18, I'm gonna be 19, I'm gonna be whatever very soon, and mommy and daddy are not gonna be the authority in my life. So who's the authority? Yeah. Who, who has that authority in my life over my body, over my beliefs, over all of these different things? But as they're moving those boundaries, a lot of times they're asking for people to be influences mm -hmm. into that. And if we are sincerely open to questions and discussion about that, they're literally inviting us to influence them. And I yeah. think that if we don't freak out, we ask the right questions, we really have have serious discussions with them, we can still influence them towards the right thing, towards yeah. Jesus. And, and it's not perfect, you know, like no, every no, no. Uh, young adult, every middle schooler is, is different and, and may, some may take your curiosity as, as, uh, as an attack. Mm -hmm. If you're, you're trying to be, um, as a parent, you're trying to be curious, but they're receiving it as like, you are that authority, you know? And, and so even with that, like giving kind of even expounding on, hey, I, I, I want to see how you arrived yeah. to this. Can you tell me more? Can can you, like, this is something I used to believe and I journeyed out. Oh, man, this is great that you're on this journey because I remember when I was figuring this out, like kind of contextualizing it even further to, to just not leave communication laying on the table, yeah. you know? Yeah, and yeah. I think I think one of the best things we can do is research and read together. Yeah. Like, a, mm -hmm. a, you know, a, a lot of parents that I talk to in my office, they freak out too because they, they don't always know how to answer. Right. And so yeah. they, they've kind of just dropped the communication. And what I tell them is it's, it's always okay to say, I don't know. Yeah. It's always okay to say, hey, let's figure this out together. Yeah, which and is, to, to that's And to ask for way. some help, yeah. to get some books and read some stuff together. Yeah. Let your student tell you their journey so that you can start thinking about it, reading about it, and walk alongside of them. Yeah. Again, in hopes that we're still pointing them towards Jesus. Oh, yeah. I, I had a friend that was, uh, she was deconstructed for uh, years mm -hmm. and trying to figure this out. And then she, uh, some of this stuff was very similar. At the beginning, I did kind of like freak out. Mm -hmm. And now luckily we were on the phone and so I wasn't, she wasn't able to see my face, but I was like, oh no. <laughs> you know? uh, so you got a parents out there, yeah. watch your face. Watch too. your face. You know? <laughs> That's a good um, advice. Uh, watch your face, all that stuff. But um, she, one thing that she brought up was she said, oh, well, the New Testament writers, they talked about hell in the context of Greek mythology because hell is not actually found in the Old Testament. The Old Testament never talks about hell. And the New Testament brings in the word, uh, the, the root of Hades, which is hell and all that stuff. So it's Greek mythology. So is there really a hell? A hell? And I, I wasn't like, yeah, there's a hell, you know? <laughs> oh, I was like, Actually, I yeah. That's interesting. I've never heard that Let's before. Let's talk about it together. Yeah, yeah. Which you could say this, even if you're like, no, I disagree with that. You could say something like you just said. Hey, let's figure this out together. Or I've never heard that perspective before. Let's look into that. Let's like, I, I, I like that. It's a, we're doing this thing together. And, and and I hate to say this, but a lot of times we are guilty, and so our our kids are guilty of coming to a conclusion because they've heard it on TikTok, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, yeah. any sort of social 40 media. Forty seconds, and you've gotten a yeah, and suddenly yeah. you're an expert. Where yes. if you yeah. really agree to to look into the, some kind of this stuff together, I think I think it helps everyone, yeah. not just them, but you as well. Yeah. Um, I would say though, one of the things that we have to do during this discussion too is be willing to own our own mistakes. Yeah. One of the things that um, when I've talked to students, uh, when I've talked to young adults who are deconstructing, a lot of times they're railing against the inconsistencies mm. in their parents' faith. Um, they talk about their mm. parents say do say to do this one thing, but yeah. the parent does the opposite. Uh, hey, don't go get drunk, and yeah. yet the parents do. Yeah. Or, hey, church needs to be a priority, but the parents never go. Uh, and so yeah. part of that, I think, is us, especially as parents, having to own our own inconsistencies of faith and being real with our students and saying, hey, you know what? You're right. I'm not always consistent. Can we can we talk about my yeah. failings right now? Can yeah. I apologize for them? Can I repent to you for them? And can can you help make me better in yeah. some of these things? Yeah, which I love that too. Because again, that if they're 17, 18, mm -hmm. 19, as a parent, you move in pretty quickly away from ultimate yeah. authority yeah. and much more into that mentor role. Yeah. And if you break, if you make it a hard and fast line of if you don't, then out, mm -hmm. then like you know, in their late twenties, it's going to be hard to get them to come mm -hmm. back, you know, or to Absolutely. want to call and that kind of stuff. And, yeah. you know, as parents, like, my gosh, you want to keep that relationship open, that, that dialogue going. Yeah. Uh, now there was one more, one last thing. Uh, you want to talk quickly about the expression side of it. Yeah. And I think uh, at the end of it, uh, as, as you're walking through all of this, I think the last thing that you should be willing to do is be willing to explore different expressions of Christianity 
uh, with your student who might be deconstructing. There are some just beautiful pictures of following Jesus that look a little bit different than the way we do church, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And this generation coming up is gravitating towards some older ancient practices, mm. and as they're deconstructing their, their faith, they're really deconstructing a little bit how we do church. Yeah. And so there's nothing wrong with pointing them towards a different faithful practice of Christianity. Right, it's still bi biblical it based, it's yeah. still, yeah, it's just yeah. looks slightly different. Yeah. Like, Still loves Jesus, yeah. just looks different. It's like churches now. Nobody yeah. has pews. Yeah, nobody and has it pews. It used to be like a— Everyone used to have pews. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So, man, that's good. That's good stuff, Robert. Thank you for coming on the podcast of again. Course. Round two, we'll have you back. Yes. In the future. It's great. <laughs> um, for those of you out there signing off, always remember uh, that you can do this. You've got this. God is with you, and so are we. Have a great week. Yeah.